Hey folks, Brenton here from RabbitFamily.biz and in this video we're going to go over a little bit the tag that's included uh, with your families and we're going to go over how to schedule and tag grouped windows. So first thing we want to look at is the tag. The tag that's included is kind of complicated um, if you've ever tried to make a traditional window tag in Revit you'll find it quite challenging um, and that is the standard 3050 tag that we would normally have drawn in AutoCAD or by hand where um, the first digit is the feet and then the second smaller digit is the inches and it's offset um, kind of like a superscript that's actually really hard to do in Revit um, but we've we've made this tag for you and we've included it so you don't have to try to go through all the brain damage it takes to try to get this to work but I do want you to know that's what the tag is like that's included that's what's going on is it's the width first in feet then the remaining of the remainder of the width in inches and then same with the height next then what comes after that is a two uh, two character identifier that is in if you want to know what parameter this is reading it's the type comment parameter in the family so if you ever do want to change it or update it that's where you would go and then you can see my little legend here for what the two letters stand for so we have one for awning casement double casement folding doors double folding or folding window I should say and then fixed window slider window and then if a window is a group of windows you get GP and we'll go over how that all works in a minute then underneath that is the seal height and it's got the same um, format as the above width and height so it's three feet off the ground th three feet zero inches off the ground and then it just says seal to let people know that's the seal height and then uh, underneath that is whatever comment you want to make it's the instance comment parameter that's displayed here so whatever you want that to be you can change it and all of these things are you can change whether it's visible or not so if you don't like that it's showing the two character identifier you can shut that off you can shut off the seal height if you want you can shut off the comment or you can do a combination of those things if you shut off the seal height the the comment moves up to replace so if you kept the comment on but the seal height off this just moves up so I've built all that into the smart window tag and then we'll go over actual tagging right now with an actual example so let's go to 3d oh I'm in the wrong project let me go to my example here so what we have <clears throat> let's put this on shaded what we have here is a group of windows and then just an individual slider window. And if we look at level one, just take a look at it in plan. This is all we've got. So let's start tagging them. So I've already loaded in the window tag and if I just hover here and click, it tags the window. And that is just a single window, right? So if we want it to show the rest of the labels on this tag we're just going to go over here we're going to click the tag and we're going to look through the options we have so the first part of the naming convention O shows feet X shows inches so it's just showing you the format the amount of digits so because this is only three foot zero and five foot zero we only need one digit for feet and one digit for inches in both the width and the height so that's all we have but to that we can and that's the most common most of the time that's all you're going to need is an XO XO is what I call it um, I'm sorry that it's built this way I tried to make it more dynamic but Revit has a lot of limitations on what annotations or what tag families can do and so this is the best I could do uh, with those limitations that they have so you'll see later if we get into a window that's in the double digits in feet uh, wide you have to move to a different uh, tag type but we'll get there in just a minute so right now let's show 
let's show everything we can. So let's go to this one and see this is showing, oh, we don't have an instance comment, so let's just put um, safety glass. Okay, I don't, I use it for different things. Sometimes I mark if it's non-insulated or if it's an interior window, I'll make a special note here. Um, but anyway, so that's there for you. So here's the instance comment below. Then we've got the seal height based on this parameter here that says seal height. If we want it to be four feet off the ground, we can put in four feet and you can see in 3D it moved us up. So if we put it back down to three here, and we go into floor plan, it will have changed. So it's smart. It's actually reading the seal height off the host level. Now, if you had a different level, like level two, um, it would be based on level two. So it's whatever level this is constrained to is what the seal height's based off of. So if you had maybe an open space, um, where the, the window is maybe a clear story and it's 10 feet off the floor, um, you need to make sure it's level, the level that's associated with is correct. Because if it got associated with level two, well, maybe it's only one foot above level two. And so your seal height would say one feet, one foot. And so in that case, you'd need to go make sure that you switch which level the window's hosted to, and then it would reflect correctly the 10 feet, if that makes sense. All right, so there we go. There's a tagged window. And let's change this to a quarter inch because most likely that's the scale a typical residential floor plan is at. All right, so that's what it looks like. Now let's get into tagging a grouped window. So we've seen uh, right here, this is all one window. Now if we go to tag it, it wants to tag the whole window. So that's what we're going to do. We'll put the tag up here. And you can see, because this is 16 feet, 4 inches wide, we need an extra digit in the foot's place. So it looks kind of messy right now. So we're just going to go up here and two digits right there. So we just pick the format we want, and now it's corrected. Okay, so that's our full window, and that's all we would normally need to tag. But maybe you want to tag the overall group, uh, but then tag each individual window. So if that's the case, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the tag command, and it's going to be trying to tab or uh, tag the whole window again. But if you just hover over the window you want and hit tab, it will let you select the windows individually. And then you can tag them just like you tagged this other window and you can add on whatever other items you want. Okay, it's that easy, not too hard. Now let's go to scheduling. Now if you want to schedule it, there's a little bit of filtering you're gonna to have to do, but I've built two schedules here. Uh, the first is an option as if we scheduled all, all of these windows, so if we look in plan, what we really have here is one standalone window and then a group of 10 windows. So we can schedule those as individuals, which means we have 11 windows, or we can schedule this group as one, which means we have two windows. So if we schedule them as a group, this is what we've got. This is what the schedule looks like. You can see the count is one and two, which a total of two windows, so one and one, total of two. One is a group right here, it says window group, five windows, five transom, and then you can see it's 16, four by seven, four. And then up here, we have our single window, which is a slider window uh, that's 36 by 60 inches. Okay, and then if we go to this schedule, this is scheduling them as if they are each an individual window. So we have five fixed windows that are three feet by two feet. Those um, three feet by two feet, those would be the transoms. So there's five transoms. Then there's five more fixed windows that are three by five. And, okay, so that's 10. 
and then we have our single slider so with a total of 11 windows. So you can see you can do it both ways and the way you do that is through filtering. So you'll see here I had to put in the schedule a column called description and anything that's nested or that, that's in that group we've just labeled as nested and then when you filter the schedule uh, actually what we want is on this first one we're filtering out the nested so if you look at the filters on this one we don't want to show the nested families so what we did is we built a filter that says look at the description parameter and make sure that it does not equal nested or whatever you want to put in there you could put an X you could also use a different parameter as your filtering parameter um, but that's what I did and then you click OK and then it filtered out all of the nested windows so you only have two windows remaining if you want the opposite what I did was I built a filter that instead of using the description used the type comment which is FX FX SL you know the designators for the window type and I just have it show everything that is not it doesn't have a type comment as GP which stands for group so you'll just have to get creative with the filtering but you can filter them out and then all we would do is under formatting I just hide the description field so in our schedule we wouldn't actually see that field same with this one we could go to description and hide it okay so it's that easy let me know if you have any questions or concerns I hope this saves you a ton of time and we'll see you in the next video